So I've covered basically what the main program does. I've covered basically what the plotting window does. And the next thing I want to cover briefly is uh, the other main window, which is the script window or the editor. You might see that in some of the books. Let me tell you something that get, I racked my brain with when I first started learning MATLAB. Uh, the first thing you want to do when you start typing in a bunch of commands here is you want to save your work a lot of times, right? Maybe you're working on homework, you're doing a complicated calculation, you want to save this window here so you can refer to it. So you'll go up to the file menu typically, and you'll see save workspace, and you'll click it, and it'll, you'll start to try to save something, and you're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm in good shape. Well, that's not really how MATLAB is designed to work. When you save workspace like that, all it's really going to end up saving is the values of the variables that you've calculated during your session. And that has uses later on. Like if you've, if you've calculated the result of some really complicated calculation, you've got a really you know, large matrix or something as an answer to whatever equation you're solving, then what this does is it saves the, the environment variables. It saves all of the output variables when you go to File, Save Workspace As. It literally is saving the workspace over here in the right hand corner, but it's not going to save all the commands that you've typed in to get there. The way you need to view MATLAB, let me just cut to the chase and I think it'll make a little bit of sense to you. Then when you finally realize this, MATLAB becomes a whole lot more understandable. This is like a calculator window. Think of a graphing calculator. Typically when you use a graphing calculator, you don't save you know what you typed in. You don't have save as and just save the entire screen, right? This is much like a graphing calculator. You type in values, you know, you get results. Right, of course, MATLAB has lots and lots of commands, so you can type in derivatives and integrals and summations and series and everything else, but it's basically like a calculator window. You're not really intended to be able to save this window like this. Now, it does give you a command history that shows you everything you've typed in, so you can go back in time and see what you did, and this is automatic. So you can sort of think of you don't really need to save everything here because it's already saved here. If I did a complicated integration or let's say I come back tomorrow and I want to reproduce this plot, I can reproduce that plot. I can just type this in again, type this in again, and then I've got my plot. I can double click this and then I can go up here and double click this and then I'm going to plot this guy again in my figure right down below. So it, it, it all works just fine uh, as far as reproducing what you did in the past. but save as like here like like you have up here doesn't really behave in the way you might expect to save everything you've done so you need to view MATLAB at first and foremost as sort of like a calculator you can just get answers to what you type in the second thing is is you need to start thinking about MATLAB in terms of being a programming language and I know we haven't we haven't done any programming yet but I'm telling you that that's where we're going eventually we're going to learn how to use the basic functions we're going to learn how to do the graphing in detail and then we're going to learn how to write programs so this is sort of like your scratch pad to play around with functions and see to, you know, to get done what you need to get done. Eventually you're going to want to write a little program in MATLAB and store that. that those programs are called scripts. Scripts. You can also write functions and different classes if you get into object oriented programming. That's a you know, much more advanced feature. But definitely little scripts are lists of MATLAB commands that I can save into a file and execute later. And functions are, are very similar. We'll talk about that later. So if you go over here to your current folder and click on the gear and then go to new file and script and hit this guy, then it's going to pop up with, it's going to try to, to create a new file for you. So let's type this in test test.m. Now when I did that it created a text file called test.m in the MATLAB directory that I'm using. The, everything is stored in the directory listed here. If I make a million more files they're all going to be listed in the same place. Now right now this is this is blank so what I need to do is double click it. When I double click this file up pops the editor window. Notice it says editor up here. This is kind of like the place where you type in all of this all of the MATLAB commands that um, that you want to execute in a script, you know, one after another, in other words. So let's say I was just wanted to do that, uh, uh, just do a simple calculation. Let's say um, I'm going to make a variable, I'm going to call it Jason, is equal to 3. And I'm going to put a uh, semicolon at the end. The semicolon tells MATLAB not to, not to just echo the 3 back to the screen. Okay, Gibson, that's my last name, I'm going to say is equal to 5. I'm going to put a semicolon at the end there. And then finally I'm going to say Jason plus Gibson. 
and I'm not going to put a semicolon there and that's going to tell MATLAB when you don't have any kind of semicolon to calculate the answer and put it on the screen. Anytime you see a semicolon at the end, it means don't don't it means suppress the output. Don't put these numbers on the screen, but only put the final answer because there's no semicolon there. This is a simple little script. First it puts 3 in a variable called JSON, then it puts 5 in a variable called Gibson, then it adds the results and puts them to the screen. So I'll notice we're working in test.m right here because that's what we opened. Let me go ahead and hit the save button and let me just kind of minimize this editor window. So I've got test.m here. Let me clear the screen, CLC. All right, everything's cleared. Now, whenever I, I do this guy, if I right click on test.m, which I have saved, I can run that little script, so to speak. So let me click run and notice that the answer, ANS, is equal to eight. And notice that over here, I now have a variable, JSON is equal to three, Gibson is equal to five. Of course, the answer it calculates to be eight because that's what my script does. It, it, it adds those two things together. So the script window or the editor window is where you type kind of like the, the things that you, you know, that you want, that you know for sure you're going to want to run later as a batch of commands. Right. So if you're working on a homework problem and you're you're really slaving for hours and hours on the exact sequence of commands you need to calculate the, your answer, you probably want to go ahead and type those commands into one of into this window so you can save it as, as something I can execute later on. So use this scratch pad, this command window to figure out how to plot the things, to figure out how to do, you know, if I'm doing an integration or, or a derivation or something like that, if I can go in here and get some quick answers and figure out what I'm trying to do. And then ultimately when I'm trying to put something together that I want to save for later, I'm going to type the commands into this, uh, this you know, .m files, what we call them, the scripts, that I can then execute at any later time. And these are the files that you save for later if you're doing a really complicated homework assignment. And so before we close this section out, let's go ahead and clear the screen, CLC. Uh, let me show you uh, another command that's really important. I want to clear all of the variables. See, we've done lots of calculations. We've had a variable called A and B and X. That's when we were using doing the plot. Then we have Jason and Gibson because we just ran that script. If for some reason you want to clear a specific value of a variable, all you need to do is type clear A. And it knows variable A is a variable, so you clear A, and notice A disappears over here. I can clear B, and B will disappear from this list over here. Now if I just get tired of the whole thing, maybe I'm done with all this stuff, I can clear all. That means clear all variables, and then it clears everything out over here. So believe it or not, you're actually on your way to really understanding MATLAB. The main thing to realize is when you fire up the program, you're confronted with this main window. This is where you type things in, you get quick answers much like a calculator. Any variables that you define in calculations are going to be reflected over here. Anything you type in, notice my command history scrolls up, is all listed here. Um, the files listed over here are any .m files that are listed in this folder that we have as our working folder and we've shown how to create those guys and they're basically you just double click here they're basically a list of MATLAB commands and this these are going to end up being really complicated once we do more complicated problems these are things that we want to execute over and over and over again we want to hang on to them so you can see how MATLAB is starting to become a programming language when you realize there's an editor and you'll see later there's a debugger and you can do lots of different ways to check and make sure that your code is right and we'll talk about all that stuff later um, but once you create the files, they're listed here. If you'd like to run the file, you right click and hit run. And notice as soon as I did that, the variables that were defined in that file are assigned and pop up here and the answer is assigned as well. So that's sort of the fundamentals of MATLAB. There's, there's uh, you know, some other things here. There's icons here. You can, I can slide this guy over to the left by clicking that button. Um, I can undock it by clicking this button here. And then when I want to redock it, I can click the arrow over here. Uh, those are just user interface. Uh, those are just user interface things that are you know things that you can play with as you go along. Let me put it here, back the way we we have it here. This that other little button that looked like a tiled button changes it back to the default configuration. Uh, and I can of course maximize if I have a lot of code. If I really want to make this the forefront, I can click this button that'll maximize the command window to fill the whole screen. This little button here that has like a bunch of little panes that'll put it back to its default configuration. So take a moment, fire up MATLAB, and reproduce some of the things that I've done for you here. Type in a couple of simple commands, type in a couple of simple variables, make sure and convince yourself that the command history is working, that you're assigning the variables here. Go ahead and create a new. 
a quick script function, name it anything you want, put something really simple in there and just show yourself that that you can execute it, that you can run it, and so on. In the subsequent sections, we're going to be covering things like how do you get help uh, in here? How do you navigate the help system? How do you do simple arithmetic? How do you do trigonometry? How do you do basic calculus? And the roadmap here is that we're going to first learn how to use MATLAB as almost like a calculator. How do you plot? How do you do matrices? How do you do calculus? Um, and how do you solve equations, things like that. Once we've completed that, then we're going to start to dive into the plotting features, the details. How do you make the plots look beautiful? How do you change them so that you can copy them out and put them in a report? Um, how do you do statistical plotting, things like that. And then finally, we're going to eventually get into programming where you can write your own real programs that, that can do complicated simulations and other other things that you may be asked to do either on your homework or in your professional uh, professional work so MATLAB I'm gonna tell you right now is a very very useful tool so take the time to learn it uh, doesn't take actually that long to learn the basics of what it can do and it can pay itself back to you many times over because when you're in a professional environment and you're asked to do something with MATLAB and you're like oh yeah I, I know how to do that that's not a big deal then um, you know it's really gonna come in handy for you because it's super powerful and it can actually help you get your work done faster uh, and easier.